<laughs> You're Glenn singing Elvis. It's funny because I think most dancing fans get it, right? You know, uh, my first experience listening, to, hearing one of those songs was what? I think we did one of those songs at um, Bordello's Halloween 1991 um, when he did an acoustic set. I think he did one night, one night that night, which was great, you know. So right. um, for me as a Danzig fan, it was it was almost expected that he would eventually do something like that. Right. But it's funny because I've heard some other Danzig fans say this is nothing what I thought it was going to be or, or what have you. And a lot of people right. were totally surprised. But. For me, I, it was just a, something that I guess, for lack of a better term, was um, overdue, but it, it was great to hear. Um, but yeah, just just really quick, that acoustic show from 1991, Halloween, dude, that was fantastic. I don't know if anyone was there, but that was pretty surreal to- That was one night with you, right? Yeah, well, well that's when that, he played that song, but a whole bunch of other right. acoustic songs and stuff. But yeah, um, that was a pretty surreal show because my friends are, I called the Danzig hotline that day because I was like, okay, we're in LA. Let's call you it, right? Because that. You have to explain to, for people who don't know, some people will not know what the Danzig hotline is. Explain what the Danzig hotline is. Huh, good point. Back, I guess, uh, <laughs> before the, <laughs> the, the before time, <laughs> before the digital yeah, history began. Exactly. Before, <laughs> before this all started. Um, one of the ways to get a lot of the information was to call an area code 213 number, an LA number to get the latest on Danzig happenings. So, right. you know, I would always call, you know, it was just cool to get updates and so forth um, about what was going on with the band. And naturally came Halloween and I was like, you know, I think they had mentioned, hey, make sure you call us on Halloween. There might be a special announcement. So naturally I called and they said, hey, we're going to be here at this location tonight. Amazing. And I was like, what did I do immediately? I called my friends. I'm like, hey, guys, Danzig is playing Halloween night. We got to go. Um, so, of course, we all get there and we're, and we're expecting, I guess, similar to the Ricky Rackman shows. And that's another story I can go into. But they were just like small, intimate, live Danzig shows. So we all thought this was going to be, okay, Danzig's playing a small club live on Halloween. And so we're all waiting around. Um, I think it, it, they, they waited till midnight and you could, and we would hang out by the kitchen because you could see like these little see-through um, windows that you could see into the kitchen and that's where the band was hanging out. And wow, uh, when they got there and they waited till midnight at midnight, they all, they came out on stage, all the lights were dark and there was four like um, bar stools set up on the stage and they came out with a, uh, lit up jack-o'-lanterns and just put them like on the stage and sat on these wow. stools and just went into an acoustic set um so that was pretty surreal so that's what that was wow. one of the first times i heard that elvis song that's where i got to hear you know glenn do like bo diddley muddy waters just down um the heated killer wolf i'm the one uh, heart of the devil that was pretty pretty surreal to see that out yet right well that was halloween 91 so Oh, no, I guess happen. how the gods kill hadn't come out, even though he did heart of the devil, you know? Wow. wow. But uh, yeah, there, there was, and that was another story where um, when they played Ricky Rackman's uh, birthday party, I think the summer of 1990. Yeah. That was a different one where they did. That was before Lucifuge came out. And that was another wild story. But that was a live set versus an acoustic set. The Ricky Rackman ones were exactly. pretty crazy because um, I remember that show. That was the first time. Um, the first one I had heard long way back from hell and snakes of Christ. Wow. That was, that was, that was pretty surreal. And not only that, the that band was, that was, was live band. That was live band. That was not acoustic. That was live band. Yeah. That was live band and there was no stage. So you were like, right. Wow. You know, it was like, you know, I can't imagine Danzig ever doing anything like that again, but this was right on the floor and um, it was pretty surreal. You know, that was pretty amazing to see. That was crazy. But you know, that's when, I just, I was just a little kid and those were like the metal days. So it's like, I'm just looking at all these like, oh fuck, look at all these KNAC <laughs> people here. But it was rad, dude. It was pretty surreal. And that's, after that show, Glenn asked my friend and I, because later, I think about a month later, they started the Long Way Back From Hell tour. Yeah. And he, he asked us, hey, what do you think of Soundgarden? And I was like, oh, they're, they're a good band, you know? So that was cool. That, so that's when he took Soundgarden out, right? I think Corrosion right. on that on that tour. So that was that was fun. Those, those Ricky Rackman parties were, we're great. And hey, and again, that all ties back to calling that Danzig hotline back in the day. So it, right. it definitely served its purpose in a, in a great way. Yeah.
Yeah. Um, question. What, assuming that you remember, what did, what was Chuck, what was Chuck Biscuits playing? Was he playing like a drum kit during the acoustic thing or whatever? Or was he tapping on like a wooden crate or something? Like how did that work with, with, uh, with Chuck drum? Biscuits was on a tambourine. No, no, no. I'm oh. sorry. That was eerie. That was eerie. Uh, was on the, okay. uh, John and Chuck were both on acoustic guitars from what I recall. Chuck was playing acoustic guitar as well? Yeah, which doesn't surprise me because they're need to play guitar on some of those Metallica sets with Glenn. I like just got hooked on a guitar. But as far as I recall, uh, John and Chuck were on acoustic and Erie was on the tambourine. It was, and I believe, I know Erie was on the, the all the way on the right and Glenn was on the other side. And in between you had Chuck and John. Okay, you're kind of blowing all, all my next mind to each right other. Now. All next you're to each other. Kind I'm of sorry? blowing my mind right. I said you're kind of blowing my mind right now because I had no idea that Chuck Biscuits a played guitar and b that you know whatever Glenn had worked out. I'd be like, all right, Chuck, you're gonna play. You're gonna play acoustic guitar over here next to John. Like that's so weird to me. That's so crazy. Wow. 